Parts like fan blades are designed in their final aerodynamic shape, but are manufactured from a flat profile. Creating that exact profile is extremely difficult unless you have an analysis tool like on shapes flatten surface. The surface is flattened using an algorithm that minimizes strain. The checkerboard option provides a visual indication of the quality of the flattened surface. The lines are always straight on the flattened surface, and the lines on the original fan blade surface look well parameterized, so the quality is good. Another indicator is the level of distortion that shows better on the next example. Staying with an aerospace theme, this nose rib, when flattened, will show a lot of distortion at the front. The colour scheme is relative and does not provide an exact figure related to the distortion, but the blue colours indicate where the material is stretched and the red colours indicate where the material is compressed or creased. To reduce the amount of creasing in this area, it might be good to reduce the strain by ripping a number of edges of the part. Now we can see the result is much better. The next example, a helmet, shows how powerful the flattened surface tool is. If you wanted to wrap the top of this helmet with a covering, the result, with the distortion colours overlaid, shows you where creasing may occur. If you've ever tried to wrap something like this as a present, you already know. For decals, where you want the final shape to be constant, or you want it to appear to be a specific shape from a certain angle, the flattened surface tool creates a very accurate final result to work from. Use the split face feature to define the shape and the area of the decal you need, then select all the resultant surfaces and as long as they are contiguous, the surface flatten tool will give you the required result. The distortion map shows there is minimal stretching or creasing. For applications like paint protection film, a mesh from a scan of a vehicle can be used. The flattened surface will appear on the XY plane by default, so a mate connector can be used to reposition it. The distortion here appears where you expect it to be, but the colour map on the original surface is useful to determine where the problems may be. Finally, an example of a formed sheet metal bracket. Surface flatten is an analysis tool so it does not create a feature in the feature list, but you can export the results in a number of useful file formats for downstream operations. Changing configurations, variables or feature parameters can take time, especially if your part studio has hundreds of features or, as in this case, custom features doing complex calculations. Every change needs to regenerate the part studio, either partially or completely, depending on where the edit sits in the feature list. This part studio only has a regeneration time of 6 seconds, but if you have to make 10 changes, that's at least 60 seconds of waiting time. Now, you can pause regeneration temporarily while you make those changes. Edits are flagged in the usual way, and a banner at the top of the screen gives you three options. Regenerate the part studio, and stay in paused regeneration mode, regenerate and exit, or discard all unregenerated changes and exit. Only configurations, feature parameters and variable tables can be edited. Sketches, holes, feature selection fields and many other operations within a part studio are blocked from editing while regeneration is paused. Pausing regeneration is useful if you need to make wholesale changes to parameters which are not driven by variables, and multiple feature dialogues need to be opened and edited, saving you the regeneration time normally associated with these types of edits. When you're done, you can regenerate features and exit, but if you accidentally discard your changes, you can restore them, and the part studio regenerates. Sketches without constraints especially imported DXF files, often have gaps between endpoints. Finding and fixing those gaps so you can extrude the profile can be a challenge, with workarounds like drawing a line across the profile to troubleshoot errors in the sketch. At the bottom of the sketch dialog, 
you'll find a new Sketch Diagnostic Tools button and the Profile Inspector. The Profile Inspector finds all the unconstrained endpoints or loose ends of non-construction entities, highlighting them in red and grouping them based on how close together they are. Hovering over each entry highlights the groups in yellow. Clicking on an entry or pressing the Next or Previous button will zoom in and now you can clearly see the gap. The error can then be fixed while the Profile Inspector is still open and the error is removed from the list. The Next and Previous buttons enable you to cycle through all the errors and fix them as you go. Fixing gaps in one group reduces the number of loose ends and pressing Next takes you to the other gaps in that group. Keeping sketches simple and allowing Onshape to auto-constrain each endpoint reduces the likelihood of these types of errors, but imported profiles frequently have gaps between entities, requiring more effort to fix the sketch before you can use it to drive a feature. Onshape professional users can now include objects from other documents in a release candidate. Clicking the Add to Release button shows an additional option to select from other documents. Then simply navigate to the other document and add any number of objects contained in that document to your release. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe or see some of our other videos linked here.